Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Play Astrox Imperium. So Astrox Imperium is a sandbox space game uh, that is done by a gentleman named Jace. He is a one-man army, basically, working on this game. And uh, he has apparently quite a few testers and people who give feedback and help balance the game and things like that. So he's got a really good, amazing uh, community backing him. And uh, yeah, so the game's in early access, so don't run away. Um, the amount of content updates that come out for this game is pretty incredible. And uh, it's 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 almost like an offline Eve. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people talk about, you know, Eve single player type game. And this uh, kind of fits that void for a lot of people. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, and there's, like I said, there's tons to the game. So we'll go through that over time. Uh, so you got modding. Um, the modding tools are incredible. Like you can do, like there's like an in-script visual like modding type system. There's uh, item editor, ship editor, um, and uh, space station editor, just bunch of tools there. And then outside the game, um, it's extremely modifiable. So even your save file is, you know, dumped in a bunch of, you know, files like that you can modify. Uh, there's a whole modding section where you can basically like a lot of the game is basically exposed for people to mod it. So and the sandbox basically offers you like 70 or 80 something options basically to modify and uh, change your whole uh, universe to to be something very special for you. So customization is crazy, but we're going to go with the new campaign. And the reason for the new campaign is because it has the tutorials, it's kind of handcrafted, it has over 100 systems, and they added wormholes now. And so wormholes kind of increase basically um, your universe to be pretty much as big as you want. Like you could add hundreds of wormholes over time into your world. You find them, you scan them, you open up and things like that. So it kind of changes that a lot. So we're going to go ahead and so this is the intro it's talking about. So basically, uh, what ended up happening is they created the Imperium. Uh, the Imperium was an AI uh, intelligence that basically helped to bring prosperity uh, to the to the Earth um, and basically help uh, you know govern and everything and bring people to a time of peace and uh, prosperity. Uh, but unfortunately, there was something happening with the Earth, some sort of disaster. It didn't really explain what the disaster was itself. And they had to leave Earth itself. And basically, uh, they uh, did a lotto system and they took who they could onto this Imperium ship uh, that they built. Uh, the, the Imperium might have been the AI and then it might have been like the Astrox or something was the ship. I, I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong. But anyways, you get the gist. And uh, anyway, so what ended up happening is they had this wormhole technology basically that the AI created, but uh, it didn't go out so right. And unfortunately, a disaster happened. Pods went flying everywhere. Uh, I did mention humanity kind of reverted back almost. Uh, so I'm not sure if, you know, maybe the wormhole failing, uh, the wormhole generator failing was part of the human error or something else. But basically, we got tossed around and we we're like two or three hundred uh you know light years away from earth and basically we start over and fresh in this new galaxy and basically you're waking up sometime later when things have been established for a while and uh, you're being rescued by one of the uh, local drones and you're brought into a, a station where they basically get you trained and started so uh which is kind of cool uh they they help you out and you know get started so uh, yeah, so that's us. We're gonna be Kane. Something boring. Yeah, I know. I'm never creative in this stuff. And uh, you have your stuff here. So um, one thing I could uh, suggest if the developer ever sees this or whatever, and it's not a big one, um, it would be kind of cool if maybe the accessories, there was like accessory one, two, three or something, or hair, and then maybe accessory, and then maybe clothes. Um, and what, what I mean by that is I feel like some of this could be split up so the hair could have its own uh, layer, the glasses its own layer, and then the uh, outfit its own layer. Which I think then would let the player be able to customize their character a bit more. But it's not a big deal, obviously. I'm just, you know, just a random suggestion. I like the guy with the glasses. I don't like his hair and I don't like his outfit as much. But I do like the guy with the glasses. So we're going to go with that. So basically, this is your slider to change things. Honestly... If this throws you off, then you got issues. This is a, this is a sandbox space game. This, you're not going to hardly look at this, honestly. It's just it's there in your character panel and stuff like that. So, um, 
it's it doesn't really mean much there honestly so uh this is the starting factions um so basically uh they're they're grouped up into three so basically you got your alpha science and civil you got your trade financial and commerce you got pirates and they have outlaw and sovereign uh, you got temple and they got the missionary and the orthodox you got the labor and they're the contract uh, uh contractor uh, extractors, and then you got law with enforcement and uh, judicial. Um, so they're basically like the first one is basically like you know the. I guess there are three factions per you know grouping, but it always seems like that the you know the first one is kind of like the uh, the alpha male. There you go. We'll go with alpha. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna start with alpha. It doesn't really matter. I believe you start in the same system and everything. Um, and the way it works out is it branches out from there. So. Um, yeah, I'll show you in the game what I mean about that. So we're going to go alpha. They're about scientists and, uh, the, you know, uh, cyber technology, things like that. Uh, they, they want to rule people by, uh, the perfect AI basically sounds quite horrifying. So let's do it. Um, and then you have starting professions. Now starting professions really basically give you like, um, just uh, a bonus to your uh, your skills at early level. So this game is extremely skill based. There's like universities around space that you can go to and train up your skills. And basically, like if you want to do a minor, you'll just get some extra, you know, um, uh, bonus skill points towards you know minor and things like that. Sort of like Eve in a sense, uh, except you don't get a, a choice. You just you know you get your distribution per faction, right? To use like those faction ships and stuff. That's sort of like what it is, really. So let's go to you know what? I'll do minor. I like mining. Um I don't think you'll make a ton of mining. Like I don't think you'll do a ton of mining early on. Like um I don't think it's worth it per se i've played only for a bit so it's like it's like one of those things that you gotta be a bit more established before mining becomes you know woohoo you know kind of thing but it's i still like mining so and it just makes other skills a little bit more challenging too right we got to work on that so uh here's the person they're gonna greet you so you're on this like little uh uh, station here the welcome center they call it so um you can go around and explore so let's do that so there is actually uh movements around um there's not a lot of use for it yet from what i've seen so there are some stations that you can go to that are like this kind of one where um they don't have any services at them and from what i can see is you can sometimes walk in some of them and then they would offer you services so there's these two panels here that they offer information which might be worth reading and checking out for yourself um, so they talk about the various factions, which is probably the same information that we saw within the uh, creation of our character there. Um, it'd be nice if the background was like this darkness, maybe a bit more just because it's harder on the eyes to see this. But um, you can pause it if you like and uh, read those if uh, I was a little too fast on the other one. Um, but basically it just talks about each of the factions. And there you go. And you have it in your book now too. So... Um, I think you can hit this button to open wall. Yeah, so uh, the uh, Backslash basically lets you open them all But you can also go ahead and just use these to open all your uh, side panels And then you can go to your I think it's pilot information or is it in a different one? Oh, you know, what? it's the journal information this one toggle journal. Oh There it goes um, And then you can go to documents. I believe there you go So here's your the the faction information as well and so you can see this one really lays it out better. Um, so in the game, you don't really notice that the factions are grouped. So it's kind of, you know, but this one actually lays it out really well. Uh, so there you go. The trade union, the outlaws, the temple. So I called them the pirates, but they actually are called the outlaws. So there you go. I didn't even realize that. So yeah, there you go. This one actually really outlays it uh, quite a bit. For some reason, the character creation and things like that don't quite give you the same, you know, you don't realize how uh, entwined they are, I guess. So uh, this is going to give you information about the history of what happened. So this is talking about the AI here that ruled and, uh, you know, people even consider it like a god, but like a good god, I guess. And uh, so they created the advanced spacecraft, the Imperium. Okay, there you go. Uh, there was the lottery that was created, and uh, the program selected uh, a binary system that they can go to. Uh, new uh, technology was created, which was the uh, 
Uh, Hume is able to connect this new warp drive, blah, blah, blah. So that was the uh, wormhole one. Uh, and no one remembers what went wrong, basically. Uh, they were all in cryo sleep, so we were actually sleeping, like we were in the stasis pod there. And then they were able to survive and make a, a home base, which were in Void Star Cross. And uh, basically the crew ejected last remnants, and uh, so, you know, people like me... Uh, ended up landing all different directions. I was in some wreckage, I guess, and there you go. So that was kind of the history of the people. Now that one doesn't show up in the journal. Um, that would be some good uh, information in the journal, but I don't think that one actually shows up in here. Or I could be wrong. No, so it shows the faction, but it doesn't show like kind of like the overall stuff there. So um, now keep in mind they are working on, and I should let you know that the campaign's not in. There's going to be a campaign that's being added to this game that adds basically six entwined storylines, which hint hint there's six factions so i'm assuming that's the whole point of it and basically over time they're gonna have these added into the game and this will add a lot of information lore um and also help develop uh the factions up to the point where we're talking about there's gonna be like eventually like faction wars things like that uh in the game i think the developer sounded like he was gonna add the faction wars before um it came out but then there were some issues and it was gonna be delayed a bit but i don't think it ever came out so um, I, I might be wrong. I might be out even. But either way, there there's going to be a lot to the world. There's a lot of events and things that happen in the background too. They have like basically like an events uh, engine sort of you could say in the background, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay, let's get going here. So then you get sent to Biomate, which is a Biomate University. It's just in the same system, I think. And basically, this just gets you started. Um, this is your tutorial person, and she's great to go through and learn about the game. Um, so I'm going to go through the tutorial, but I'm not going to actually follow her. I'm just going to go ahead and just like kind of skip through it. But it might as well do it because you can't actually um, you can't actually do much at first without going and getting a level or two because you can't use your missions and stuff like that. So because I guess you're level zero or something like that. I'm not sure how that works, but. Uh, Okay, let's uh, let's do that. Okay, give me the basics. So she's just telling you the basics of your 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 station here, how to use the garage and open things up, which I'll teach you that. And then she's talking about the tactical sensors, and then she's talking about the mining itself. Uh, so you know how to go out mine, you know use your sensory and all that stuff. So that's pretty simple. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually change some options in the game because I uh, there's some changes I like that I prefer. So first of all, let's go with the dark, darker UI because I like that. You can even hand customize the UI here to change all the little bits on it, which is really cool. I like to remove camera depth, motion blur, and bloom effect. Uh, I don't like any of the blur or anything which camera depth and motion blur does. And then the bloom effect, I just don't like the, the oversaturation of the, the bloom of, you know, you can turn it up and down, but I just don't need it. Uh, I prefer like the older, grittier look to the game. And uh, yeah, that's my personal preference, obviously. So, um, and under extras, uh, some of this can be considered like cheat menu, some of this is not. So over here might be some sort of cheat stuff to a bit. Actually, it's instant skill training. Um, and that's maybe it. Oh, and some of this is here, the life one here. Um, so this is up to you. If you find life support too hard, you can set this to zero, make it easier, or you can crank it up. I don't know many people who would probably crank this up because then it'd be really hard. Um, what we're going to do is double click autopilot. This makes it more like EVE Online. So do that if you if you don't want to accidentally click everything, have autopilot run to it and things like that. Um, and then you have all these panel things like you can um, uh, turn this one off. I prefer this one. So auto zoom to galaxy map. So when you're zooming in and out, uh, basically it will not automatically go to the galaxy map and make you hit the you, your head in the desk uh, keyboard. Um, which I think is a, a really good one. These are warnings and market pop-ups. Basically, these are like the tutorial pop-ups. Uh, I'll leave those alone because they will pop up and say you can close this and not see it again. So that just works for me. And they also have an import system here. So if you have a character, a pilot that you've played in another save, and you want to import them you know, with all their skills and stuff like that, you can actually do that. And that way you're not losing all that hard work because it could take you a very long time basically to go through all your skilling and training. Um, also, let's go ahead and just bring this stuff down just a wee bit here. 
it's always hard to do the sounds because sounds are they got 3d uh audio in here which is really cool um but you know you got like the 3d sounds and 2d sounds and stuff like that but you have different layering of sounds so sometimes sounds are a little louder than other ones so uh, you got to bring it down just a wee bit so that you know it doesn't over uh topple us over time okay so here's our ship it's a little starter ship. It has three hard points on it, which is pretty cool. And uh, if we go ahead and open all the uh, things again here, uh, we can go over to our sh uh, garage here. And there's our ship. And there's some information about our ship. And uh, so we can repair it. We can repair the armor. We got a life support. And so the life support is its own little panel here. And you can just dump the your your food in here. So this is a protein bar, and the life support is actually a really big part of this game. So you start with three, uh, two life support systems. Uh, you can buy some more as well. So you can go. There's a thermal and waste basically. So what we can do is go to the market and click the life support here. Now there's a lot of other emergency life supports and stuff like that. But uh, okay, so here is 10% uh, uh, to waste. Which that's kind of useful. There's a temperature genie that's too expensive right now for us. Um, there's this little cheaper one, the thermal uh, controller. So let's go ahead and purchase that, and let's get those uh, diapers here as well. Oh, here's an improved filter too. I don't really. Yeah, we'll go with that. And then okay, we got that, and we're gonna get our diapers. And uh, yes, you could get improved filter here too, and that's your water one. But we'll leave what we have now. And uh, basically the reason you do this is because when you're exploring space, especially some hostile environments, um, basically it's kind of like a mini game, which is really cool. Basically you're fighting with the environment and your uh, life support systems help you kind of fight back f with that. And so uh, it's just a, like a neat thing basically down here is your, your hazard. And uh, this is no hazard right now. But when you're in space, if there is hazards, uh, you might only have like 10 minutes that you can last in that space and uh, the better set up your life support is the longer you can survive in that type of space so it's actually a very very nice little feature so uh, we'll, we'll play around with that more over time you got custom options which is really cool you can actually go ahead and uh, change like your uh, your tail stuff here so um, you can go ahead and play around with oh that's the wrong one I guess um, oh there you go I didn't play with the right one. There you go. So you can play with your tailing color here if you want. So there. Oh, I like that. That's actually kind of fun. Okay, let's go pink. I'm not sure what this... Oh, okay. Oh, you can make it like invisible or like lighter, I guess. There you go. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. And even in the options, there's a way to increase your tail size as well. So... Um, and then uh, I'm not sure what this one is. It doesn't does it say what it is? No. Well, we'll find out what it is. Oh, it's like little details. See the little details on there. So there you go. It, it only has it in a couple places. There you go. It's, it's him behind the hard points and stuff like that. So just the little details. And uh, then the ship itself, you can also you know do a, you know play around with it. Set you know your sliders here. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So you can have a very, very pink ship, but we can also uh, play around with the alpha, make it very darker. That's pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with green and pink. <laughs> um, each ship has its own specials, by the way. And, uh, the, the, that was something I read in one of the devlogs. He does a lot of devlogs, by the way, for the game. And, uh, he put a lot of, like, extra big specials on the ship, so... Uh, it definitely kind of gives you a lot more to those ships. So we got three active slots. We got passive slots. So in EVE Online, you got, uh, you know, high, uh, medium, and low, and then I think rigging. Um, this game only, at least from what I've seen so far, has only the high and then basically the low, uh, you could say almost. Um, but uh, that, that's fine. It doesn't need to have like a million and one slots. And uh, the active slots have some like of the medium slots that you would see some in something like Eve. So it has like a bit of a mixture. Passive slots are extremely powerful too. So uh, it's quite different than what you're probably used to. So let's get rid of this and let's go ahead and put a, a generic uh, light miner there. You can go ahead and get another miner as well if you want. So if you don't want to search for it, you can type in miner here and you can grab this. You can even grab a more efficient version here. So um, oddly enough, we have the skill for this, but um, 
Interesting. So, yeah, I guess it is slightly better, right? So, yeah, better DPS. It's just funny that it doesn't, you know, it's a small versus, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I think it's just a slight, you know, a slight amount more. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, the same one just because they match up. There you go. And there we have it. So uh, our sh ship should be ready, except the, the hard point didn't show up on there. <laughs> Bad hard point. Oh, maybe that's the passive slot? No. I, don't, I actually don't know why it didn't show up there. Oh, it's underneath. Okay, so that's something different then on that side. Oh, there it is. Oh, they're on the bottom top in this thing there, so the side one is different. Okay, that might be part of the passive or something else. Um, so you can get passes as well from uh, here. Um, so, oops, sorry. Uh, mark it. And then you can go to passive slots here. So you can see all the different passive slots here. They have like the advanced cargo, which is really nice. That means you can expand your cargo. You get a basic one here, just 10%. Um, I don't think I would bother with any of these yet. The only thing I would maybe consider is extra targeting. Max to targeting is two. That's pretty uh, little, but you know what? Target? Yeah, let's do that. Target. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get this one. I know it's a lot of uh, credits to begin with, but this is so much worth it. And I'll show you why when we get out there. So that goes eight to targeting. So that's going to give us a nice jump there. So let's go ahead. There you go. So we got that on our thing. So down here, it'll actually say somewhere. There you go. Max targets 12. Normally, you with this ship, it's uh, 4. And uh, you can increase that through um, bigger ships, through obviously modulars, potentially through uh, other things like skills. I'm not sure if, that, if there is one that increases it through skills or if it's just other bonuses like speeds and stuff like that. Okay, so we are in space now. So this is what space looks like, and uh, it looks very different in each uh, different uh, system. Uh, they, they've made it pr very pretty, and it, it does give you that, you know, that Eve look to it, which I really love. And uh, though I love the way they, they've done the stars in this one. Look at the effect there. I love that. Uh, so, yeah, we have a mission here. Basically, what we're going to do is hit space. And if you have an active mission, so we'll bring up this, like this one here. Uh, basically, you can go ahead and uh, just go through it, and it says hit space bar, blah, blah, blah. It's teaching you the basics. So we're just going to follow that. We're going to double-click that and go towards it. And your autopilot will activate here. And uh, you can turn that on and off. You can turn other you know, uh, effects on and off as well. And then to explore the uh, – to basically scan and explore the system, what you can do in tactical mode – by the way, I'm using space for tactical mode – is you want to start scanning all the uh, important structures here. So we go around and we're just going to go ahead and scan uh, all these uh, stations and places here. And uh, there's quite a few of them. Maximum targets acquired. So uh, the closer you are to the target, the uh, basically the faster um, you can uh, lock on. But you just let them basically do their thing. So are we still close? Oh, yeah, we're already close. You can actually set your distance up here. So you can increase or decrease your distance uh, to the objects there if you like. So we're going to go ahead and use our hard points. You can hit Control Z to activate them all at once. And then you can use Control, uh, I believe, X to stop it. So, so our objective is already done. You didn't need much. I should have uh, not kept this stuff in my inventory, but not a big deal. Another thing you can do, which I'm going to do myself, I don't like the interface as big as this, is you can actually scale the interface a bit more. There you go. And that way you get, you know, that way I can keep the interface open kind of more often, but uh, at the same time, uh, you get more view area. So hopefully it's not too, too small for you guys. But I mean, if you're watching on a phone or, you know, a small laptop or whatever, then you're probably used to that anyways. And there we go. So uh, we've we finished mining that. And do we have any more space? Oh, yeah, we do. So let's go over to this guy. Oh, actually, he's pretty far away, isn't he? Ah, maybe not too bad. And uh, you can hit shift or you can hit control, uh, shift or, sorry, cap lock so it keeps it on. Or you can click this on and off down here and this will turn off, turn on your afterburners. 
and they give you like a nice oomph basically so your laser should automatically target here but um oh this aura is so let's go closer then this might have issues just because of the size of it honestly yeah i think our lasers oh here we go i'm actually surprised it hit it I think sometimes it has uh, issues just recognizing that's a large size, like radius-wise sometimes, so you gotta get a little closer. There's a certain range to these, I'm guessing. What is it? Uh, oh, okay, max range is 11, so it's basically based on the core, I guess, of it, not the, uh, not how far it comes out. <laughs> so might as well fill up our inventory for fun. There you go. As time goes on, obviously, you can upgrade these and there you go. And we're full. So let's go ahead. Um, if you want to, you could zoom all the way in, get a first person, hold right click, and you're actually moving it. So I'm going to use my W. Oh, maybe I wasn't. Oh, you've earned your first. Uh... Oh, okay. So we got a medal for earning our first uh, or. Okay. And you get 12 skill points, too, and some credits. Awesome. So let's turn off autopilot. I think that's what we have to do. And then what you can do is you can hold your, uh, I don't, oh, okay, it's holding down left click and you can move around and then you use your WSD keys to kind of move around. Um, it's not really meant for this kind of style, obviously, but you can do it if you want to. Um, this is probably great for like, maybe you're placing down a station later on and stuff to just get like accuracy done, but I wouldn't really use that outside of that. So let's go back to the uh, university here. Let's find our ship. Here we go. And there's, uh, you can speed up the game as well. So uh, I won't probably do that often right away, just because we're doing the the baby steps, right? But uh, I'll show that over time. So we're gonna come up here, and uh, we're gonna get closer. And then you can do uh, auto dock like this. So if you click this, it'll automatically dock, or you can just click the dock button on there. And there you go. So we finished that tutorial mission. We've gotten ourselves an extra skill point and some uh, experience points. So um, you get every time you level up, you get more um, skill points. But on top of that, um, you also get skill points for doing the missions. And so basically, you get skill points for doing stuff. <laughs> so there we go. We've leveled to two. So there you go. It's just great work. Um, sure, why not? So she's going to get us to her... Uh, brother here and uh, he's gonna train you on basic combat so you can just say okay I'm ready got it and uh, let's go for the shorter version which I don't know if it's actually shorter or not um, so it's talking about stats shields so this is your your different information so shields armor energy and life support um, it does say uh, life supports in red but it oh here you go first mission complete metal uh, your life support systems, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so the red uh, b uh, bar below energy. No, 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 that's orange. He's, he must be colorblind. It's your, your hair color, buddy. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and it talks about basically the same idea, you know, uh, putting the modules on, blah, blah, blah. Pretty darn similar. So let's go and get ourselves some lasers here. So uh, we have uh, light laser. Let's get uh, some more of those then. So we can get light laser and let's get two of those. So we'll go actually. Oh yeah, that works. Am I doing something wrong? There you go. Oh, no room in cargo. Oh, ah, that's smart. Uh, so what we can do is click here to open your station cargo and start dumping this in there. There you go. So, and then uh, this might be derpy. So you might have to click it again. There you go. And uh, so we got two of those we want, right? I feel like I did not buy two then. Okay, confirm purchase. There you go. You got two of those, and yeah, that'll work. And so your generic like lasers here, um, we're gonna equip those onto our ship here. I think you can. Oh, right click. There you go. You can't right click these into it though. No, you can't. You can right click them out, to make it faster. There you go. So we're all weaponized now, and great. And then you can also use the refinery here. So there's a refinery here. And uh, basically, you can activate this, and it will refine those into uh, 
byproducts like water, carbon, and hydrogen. And that's usually better because you can sell the ore and its base price is 12.2. But when you do all the components and you price it out, you usually will get a bit more money from all the components you get out of it, especially depending on like supply and demand. And then you got skills that will help you mine more efficiently and uh, the, the, I guess the better miners help you. And then the refinery has, you know, skills towards it too eventually. So basically you got like 101 skills towards all that. Um, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to have a quest here, and did I close the interface on it? I might have derped up on some part. He was explaining how it works, and I think I might have interrupted him. So you can go to offices, and so you got different ones here, like there's a camera here. Um, so we'll touch that after, but we're looking for basic combat. There you go. Uh, okay teach me next okay so I might have I'm not sure what happened here oh I might have clicked that let's do this there you go so now he's gonna take us out we got to kill a dro uh, dro uh, drone right yeah 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 so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna undock here and uh, we're gonna open our tactical view here the drone is down here oh yeah we have all the targets from before Let's go ahead and just uh, untarget everything here. So basically, permanent targets like stations and things like that, they'll stay in your list. And then you have, um, like, you know, if you target an NPC or an asteroid or something like that, then they will disappear. You have to re-lock re onto them again. But uh, everything else, basically, you can just, like, kind of instantly click. And that's why I, I like the, uh, the target module. It lets us, you know, obviously uh, target multiple things here. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Start shooting these. And you can hit the, hit the control Z one again, but I prefer it that way anyways. And there we go. Um, and one thing I learned even with my testing and playing around with this yesterday is there is a, a passive uh, scanner system. But what I like to do is go to the passive. There you go. Passive options. I don't know why they call it pulse. But anyways, there's an options here, right? So I like to have toggle crates on. But then what I do, so we got uh, some skill points for our first raider, awesome. So like, what I like to do is I, I turn all these off, basically. I go ahead and I literally turn every single one of these off, except uh, raiders. Because raiders are bad guys, so like if you go into a system, I like to automatically just have them lock in. And uh, loot crates. So basically, if a crate drops, then you'll get it. So then you can turn the auto passive on. And, oh, look at that. We actually did get a crate from that. So what we can do is double click that. And we'll go towards it, and we should be able to loot that here. So, my ship kind of decided to over. <laughs> he doesn't want to turn. He's he's having a bad day. And of course, if you hit shift, you're probably not helping it. So I think we're doing it right. I think something is up here. Oh, there's the open there, but you are supposed to have. I think there's supposed to be a target thing up here, but I don't see that. Oh, because your filter's up. Derp, derp, derp. That's why. <laughs> I had the filter open. I was looking for this button here. So look at this. So you got two items here. But look at that. I got 68,000 credits. Yes. One thing you'll learn is looting the rats, the NPCs themselves, is very worth it because there's a chance to get some decent credits just from the looting of them. And then, of course, you can get some stuff from them as well and I believe they even have the chance of dropping special stuff now another thing you should do is click this button because if you're going to use the passive scanner like I did it's going to keep scanning it over and over and over and keep popping up and that'll be obviously annoying but you can d delete and trash it there's also wreckage that you can salvage I don't have a salvager on here I've never actually done salvaging yet you know I'm Brand new player to this. I just only played for a couple hours just to learn the basics. So I wasn't, you know, doing a Let's Play series and was a complete idiot. <laughs> um, but, yeah, let's do auto dock here. There you go. I love the paint. Whee! There you go. And there you go. We got some credits from that. And thanks for the help. Uh, let's go again. Can you really do that? <laughs> so, I mean, you can rin rinse and repeat for this. This actually would be probably, uh, honestly, this would probably be okay-ish profit because, um, 
it, it's it's not a really bad uh, way of getting gaining profit, honestly. If he were to drop the thing each time. Missions when you start out are a little low, but I mean, it, this would be a very boring method of farming, but uh, I guess it's a way you can do it. Or maybe it's set up now that you can't, you know, get a mission. Oh, well, it has the mission here. You do get, yeah, you get a reward for it too. So, so yeah, it seems like potentially you could do this over and over if you wanted to. So, uh, let's do our control Z this time and uh, take them out. Oh. out and then so your auto target happened that time we didn't even have to touch that obviously so we can click open and we got 15k credits that time so it's up and down obviously and there you go and uh, oh we hit the destroy container button and there you have it and then you head back to the university there and then we do our little afterburner here this is going to get in our way isn't it <laughs> It's smart enough to path around it, but obviously you, you slow down a wee bit for it. So you can actually see your speed here with uh, the burner. So I guess by default it's 174, but uh, yeah. So it's a 200 boost basically, which is pretty awesome. That's like a huge, huge boost. You can even upgrade that with the module. So thanks for the help. And I think I got the hang of it. Um, so life support. Okay, yeah, let's get started. So this person going to talk about life support. So uh, basically, we, we went through that, the food, water, thermal, and waste on there. And uh, so food, uh, so basically he's just going through all of the, each one, basically talking about them, which is awesome. So thank you for training. Okay, I will. There you go. And then uh, other training ones are in here as well. So uh, you got uh, the camera basics here. Teach me the basics so you can go through here. And they'll tell you how to do the camera. Basically, it's just simple, you know, information just to help you. Oh, what is this comm number? Huh. wonder if that actually does something. Appears to be an invalid blah, blah, blah. Aha, uh -huh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it must have some kind of function maybe later on or something you can get or, huh. There's, there's so much to this game you can learn. You, you got the wormhole basics here. So this one is actually worth grabbing even if we're not going to do wormholes yet. Um, and look at the interfaces. You can change them up. They can get even smaller. Like if you do that. I actually kind of wish there was a button where I can just tell him no. Just click on them. Because I like the, the larger screen. But uh, I don't like, you know, there you go. You can do it that way, I guess. There you have it. But uh, basically, I love that though. Isn't that clever? Like you don't see that in games. Like, you know, the developer syncing enough to, you know, make those smaller so they talk about the wormholes uh, there are anomalies that you can find um, they're very hard to see uh, you can find them through the active scanner um, and uh, basically uh, when you're scanning other things it will even tell you if there's a wormhole in the system so it kind of gives you that that thing and it basically tells you how you can go in them on the other side it's very deadly I've never seen a wormhole, never gone to a wormhole. I've just, you know, obviously went through some of this and read it. So it should add a, a thing in your file too. That's that's kind of the, 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 the trick here is to add it to your file here. So now I can go through this at any time I want and read through this. And that's that's kind of the, the reason why it's worth just going through these quickly. Um, so life support, uh, basic drones. Uh, hopefully this is not a mission mission, but... Uh, Hopefully it's just teaching you the, the yeah, so it's talking about drones. I've never done drones, by the way. Um, like I said, I only played for a couple hours, so. Uh, and then you got uh, basic fleet commands here. So it teaches you how to uh, control your mercs. Another thing I've never touched. So that's good. Cool. I like how they're putting in your thing, uh, your document there. So uh, then you have it. And there you go. So I think we got uh, a bit of everything, I think. I don't know if we got the navigation one. There you go. Well, if we don't, we have it now. And it might not even have an option for it. So there you go. So wormholes, basic merc and fleet, faction overview, drone basics, and advanced options. Awesome. So there you have it, my friend. So next time what we'll do is we'll start running some missions. And... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go through those and see what we can come up with. And, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this intro. Um, I, I played it, like I said, I played a couple hours because I wanted it to, you know, be a wee bit knowledgeable. That way, when I did this video, um, hopefully it was, it was something a little nicer for you guys, especially if you're new yourself. 
and that way, um, you know, I would able to, you know, have the first episode or two kind of like sort of a intro slash tutorial slash let's play series. You know what I mean? So hopefully I didn't overdo it with information. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of repeat myself over time when I do things. So uh, hopefully it's not too confusing. And, you know, next episode, maybe I'll go through all the different icons here at the start too, just to kind of have a refresher and review of what's going on. But uh, either way, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, to like, all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you wonderful people next time. Look at the little robot there. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye.